All right, so from today onwards, we are going to start a brand new playlist called Sock Stories. So every story will be having a specific alert, wherein I'll show you how exactly the alert look like. This is going to be a practical alert, real world alert, right? And I'll show you how exactly you detect them on EDR or SIM tool and what would be the incident response process practically, okay? If possible, I'll also show you that in the enterprise EDR tool, okay? So without taking much time, let's get started. All right, so let's begin. The very first uh, alert is suspicious PowerShell command execution. So basically this highlights or shows the potentially, uh, potentially unauthorized or malicious PowerShell activity, okay? So this may include uh, obfuscated script or encoded commands or unusual command prompt or uh, you know commands that is used by an attacker or malware to execute certain scripts or download certain payloads or bypass security controls okay so as a part of incident response we will we will first start with the preparation this is where we will prepare enough resources or security commands security controls sorry to detect any any of such alerts or any of such alarms into the network right so the in the preparation step you have to make sure you enable and configure the logging in the system so that you can detect anything happening across powershell okay you also need to make sure you enable the sysmon as well and then it's very important uh, you know it makes your job easier if you have edr and this all incident response is possible only if you have an edr okay an efficient edr solutions like cisco ed cisco edr crowdstrike uh, or xdr X, xdr is the extended uh, detection and response so once you have solutions like crowdstrike sentinel one carbon black microsoft defender for endpoint or cisco xdr this makes your job quite easier okay so if you have logging enabled sysmon is very powerful because sysmon give it's a it's a it's a, a windows uh, plugin it's a windows package which help you to discover security events into the event manager of your of your uh, windows system right and um, um also building up detection rules as well even if you have an xdr or edr solution uh they come they come with the inbuilt rules to detect powershell script but you can also verify and create some more detection rules as well okay for example to detect any invoke expression on the powershell or to detect any downloading uh, external script or hidden execution flags so you can possibly do that but remember if you don't want to do you know if you don't want to go with all this manual process you can simply go for some efficient edr solution that i just talked about and it take care of everything okay so you don't have to worry but still it is very important if you work on detection rules maybe from yara maybe uh, from sigma rules or uh, maybe on kql uh, rules may uh, you know which allow you to build some custom rules it can be done on crowdstrike it can be done on sentinel one um, you know sentinel one or maybe uh, cisco xdr solutions as well right so let's talk about detection now you have prepared everything to detect new alerts now let's talk about um, you you came across you encountered the alert and these are some of the alert samples that i just want to talk about so the the first alert that you see is the uh, basically it's related to encoded powershell command so this is very uh, you know very much about obfuscated command okay that's flag that can be flagged as suspicious so usually all the xdr tool by default detect these samples alerts okay second if you look at the second alert this is basically powershell script uh, to download and execute certain packages so this directly uh, this script directly uh, you know uh, executed directly from the external url and this is considered to be high risk because you see this um, you know there there is an url as well under this which is malicious site.com for example okay and this is basically downloading some exploit on your machine which is definitely not good okay 
third is the hidden powershell window execution okay this the, running this commands in the hidden window is commonly used by to evade uh, user detection okay now fourth is suspicious powershell string manipulation with this uh, it, it uh, you know it breaks down uh, commands into string using uh, some concatenation uh, which is which is definitely not good and malicious as well fourth sample that i just just um, just sharing you it's related to uh, external command okay external command execution so we can use powershell to call external command line utility which can be to discover all the assets or to identify uh, what are the different vulnerable machines we have into network this definitely indicates suspicious behavior in the network okay now uh, then what is once you see the alerts your first job is to examine the alert your job is to examine the alert what kind of execution it is uh, is it falling under some of the example just i just showed you is it in the in the invoke expression is it the iex or uh, which is which is definitely malicious but what is the category of it so every powershell execution will take process we also need to identify how many users are currently impacted or how many computers are currently impacted into the network. We also have to understand the process relationship and we need to check the user activity. Okay, I'll show you with a real world example. You can see this is the uh, Cisco XDR tool. In this, this is the first, this, the first alert itself is in PowerShell execution. Okay, now if I look at the incident in detail, you can see these are all the this is all the over this is all the information about the specific alert or incident okay now you can see this is the specific device where i have three devices impacted and this is the connected process and this is the corresponding username okay and we have around eight ip address been called under this and uh, this help us to understand what are the different dependencies we have into the system you can see these are observables so observables are the possible iocs iocs are basically indicators of compromise so you understand okay this is all started with the cmd.exe file this file got executed and then you have unknown process name which is daqqa59 something like this and this is the hash file name this is the process path as well so this gives you a lot of information you can also view all and get more detail next we have detection in the detection then you see a lot of artifacts a lot of information about what is happening you can see the source came in from crowdstrike falcon and then you have observable uh, related to okay this is the this is the suspicious file this is the indicator of compromise cmd.exe copying this or storing this file is very important because our next job would be to uh, you know see how many devices are currently impacted you can see uh, cmd.exe currently i have 10 uh, devices most likely 10 devices which are uh, you know i think yeah these are all the devices you see this two three four five so these are all the devices which are currently impacted at this moment and based on this i can identify what is the overall impact into the network you can see the no not sorry sorry the currently we have only four assets which are being impacted you can see the number of devices here right so we can identify the asset and this is all happened based on what file uh, triggered this alert okay cmd.exe was the file which got executed on this machine and what xdr basically does is basically looked at all the system which has the same file or which got the same uh, type of execution on that machine so that's how we get the detect the it, we get it detected okay so xdr make it very easier on the detection tab you can see the indicators uh, which shows what is uh, what is suspicious okay now you can uh, you know you can also search on all of your endpoints which has a similar indicators and uh, similar files getting executed or or maybe the hash of the file okay so now let's come back to the our flow and go to the next phase 
now you have analyzed the alert you also got to know about the overall uh, impact onto the network how many devices are currently impacted you also need to understand a few things before you go to the next step now this is this is uh, uh, need to be done along uh, the moment we get the uh, alert itself right i just added in the all together new uh, new section but remember it is also important to make sure you remove any false positive into the network this could happen that uh you know there are some administrator who who might run this command powershell is not used by sales team it's not used by the marketing team either it is it, it is used by the developers okay administrators so you need to make sure if it is coming on coming in only from a one system and this is owned by maybe developer or some some engineers you can directly get in touch with them maybe on the microsoft teams chat or maybe over the call and confirm if they are executing this command and what's the purpose of it and then you can close the alert or the incident right next we have containment now containment is basically it's a, it's a phase in the incident response process that involves in taking steps to limit the spread of your security events or maybe the incident this is helpful to prevent any further damage into the network okay so this includes the uh, isolate this include isolating the affected machine my uh, the endpoint if the command is uh, uh, definitely you know serious and will impact the system we should isolate the machine from the network um isolating the device will uh, you know uh, uh, prevent further lateral movement or data exfiltration as well you can also suspend or restrict the user account you can temporarily disable the user machine running on that computer or restrict the user account involved in running the suspicious command okay then third is block the command execution so you can make sure the use the endpoint tool to kill all the processes if the attack is still going on okay now let me show you on the uh, xdr tool if you look at the uh, you know response process there are multiple phases involved you can see the containment right in the containment xdr itself is giving you all the information what what you want to do uh, you know um, you have content incident to stop the uh, spread across the network do you want to block the ip address um, you know stop this malicious spread uh, you can get the file hash you can identify the vulnerability as well so these are the possible uh, you know uh, response or containment steps you have okay now uh, next let's go to the next phase uh, once you have isolated the machine you have contained the problem you have contained the incident what you can do is now you can look at uh, different uh, eradication step in the eradication step you think about how can i remove the threat from the network so for, okay so uh, first is the remove the malicious file and second we review uh, review and reset the user privileges and then we also clean the registry entry and uh, any scheduled task into the network as well let's see on our xdr tool in the xdr tool you can see we have different stages where we mitigate and remediate the vulnerability we reimage the system we uh, remove the malicious content as we just saw okay next phase is recovery now recovery is very interesting is uh, you can uh, restore the system from known good backup so if you know that three days back it was a very clean backup so you can roll uh, you know restore your system from that backup file and you can monitor for any reoccurrence on the same system so you can keep your system under complete monitoring for maybe next three four days or maybe a week and then you can update the security controls as well right let me show you on the xdr what's the response okay you can validate the eradicated host or unquarantine asset then you can validate the reimage system host for this you can add a note and assign this to maybe system admin you can implement the recovery monitoring close and export the incident okay now the recovery is done next step is to create document you have to document everything that you have learned you have to conduct a post incident review you have to conduct a document you have to document the key findings from start to the end right with the timeline about what was happened initially what was the indicator of compromise 
that includes the IP address, the uh, file name, the process name, uh, you know, everything that you have observed, abnormal activity, everything based on the timeline. And then and then you document everything and then you, sh uh, you know, in uh, prepare or uh, submit recommendation as well about what are the new detection rules you should really add into the system. Maybe you should add those IP address in your blacklist or maybe you should add those, um, you know, file name or process name in the blacklist as well. So that, I mean, not in the blacklist, but you can create a detection rule around it, right? Finally, you have to communicate and report it to the all the stakeholders, uh, especially it could be with uh, definitely with your manager and it could be with your legal team and business team and everyone who who are are part of that stake okay who are part of that team or uh, next we have uh, prepare an incident report a report is will be a final report a semi-technical report which consists of what happened what was the overall damage into the network and what is the uh, recommendation and future plan all right so this is the incident response and this is the uh, sock story one of the sock story